Hey, welcome to my hike. I'm Kevin, and uh, yeah, I'm kind of surprised to see you out here today. This is a trail that hardly anybody goes to because there's no cell phone reception. And I find that in Los Angeles, people avoid places that don't have cell phone reception, and, uh, and it's kind of nice. If they can't be on their phone, they don't want to go there. Case in point, no one's ever broken into my house because there's no cell phone reception up there. Hey, Bobby, I'm in. Come on around back. We'll load up the truck. Doesn't happen. All right, man, we got a good trek ahead of us today. So strap on your helmet, pull up those spanks, put that cell phone away, and why don't we go take a hike? On my left side in a minute, it's a gentleman you know from the films Mean Girls, Grown Ups, Aliens in the Attic. You can see him every week on ABC on a sitcom called Schooled. He's a great improv player, great stand-up. I worked with him on SNL for a couple years, and he was Leon Phelps in The Ladies' Man. Great guy, funny guy, Mr. Timmy Meadows. Kevin, this is my first hike. Yeah, You've never man. hiked before? I've never hiked before, man. Well, this is kind of a pseudo-hike. Wow. Well, more like a stroll well, it's... on an incline. Did you like being on SNL? I did, yeah. I when, mean... Yeah? I when did. you went back to host, was that fun? <laughs> the first six shows, I kept thinking I was going to be fired and that somebody was going to really realize that they hired a guy who used to work at a record store as a writer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, no. But you had a lot of like clout behind you because you were coming from the Second City Troop in Chicago. Right. And you you worked in that. You were at a good time there. You were there with Chris Farley, right? Yeah. Yeah. How was that? Um, it was great. Farley was, you know, we improvised a lot together because we came into, we got both got hired to Second City around the same time. Yeah. And so we sort of bonded. And you both weighed the same at the time, right? <laughs> yeah, <I mean. laughs> but that's where he came up with the motivational speaker, right? That's where he, yeah. But Odenkirk wrote that back at uh, Second City. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Farley, we, he would do, we would do these improv sketches where Farley would play a coach yeah. who was trying to get his team motivated. And it was basically us being, you know, knuckleheads. Yeah. He's really happy to be able to like watch him perform that scene every night. And then he brought that to SNL. Yeah. And was he the Chris Farley that we knew on SNL back then? Was he kind of like Yes, you know. Yeah. Trying to he keep never, things under control. He never he was always the way we knew him. The only thing that changed was that he had more money. So yeah, so Farley came to SNL, I remember when he got off the elevator with his, I think his brother and his mother, mm -hmm. and he was so googly eyed and pulling up his pants and yeah. like a little kid in a candy store. Yeah. But then he came on SNL and you guys all knew him. I didn't know who he was, mm -hmm. but I could tell that there was some magic there. Yeah. And, um, and then we kind of saw what happened. He, he was like really fun to improvise with. And uh, for me, he sort of, validated ideas that I had like because yeah. it was hard hardest thing for, as a, for me as a writer was to say here's an idea I have you know even like at the pitch meetings and shit like on Monday nights was the most nervous I would be all week but Farley was like one of the first people to really say uh, like I like your idea let's, let's do it on, in the improv set yeah. you know and how many times would they fail well, he would be in, the, so they wouldn't fail that much. There would be occasionally, you know, ideas that didn't go well, yeah. but like, Farley was fucking money, you know? He was, yeah. Do we need to watch out for snakes up here? Any elephants? Actually, Great. we've had elephants here. You have? There was an Indian wedding here. Really? An official Indian wedding. You have to have the bride or the groom come in on an elephant. And we had an elephant here. And there's actually a protocol. There's so many of them. So there has to be somebody that comes and picks up the poop. And then LA City Animal Regulation actually has a shooter. So if the elephant starts oh, for some reason to go on a rampage, there is a there's an official sharpshooter. Wow. Well we'll watch out for elephants then. Yeah. Watch Thanks, out. man. Right. Why can't you come up with a good story like that? Oh, and by the way, Tim, I also have somebody following behind us today to pick up our poop. <laughs> Who do you think will go back and host SNL first, you or me? <laughs> <laughs> have you been back at all? No. I have not been back at all. I mean, I stop in and say hi to Lauren, but... Yeah, me too. They, they called me, or sent me an email for the Eddie Murphy show. Yeah. And asked me if I was going to be in New York 
that they wanted me to come by the show. And they said, uh, you know, Lauren wants you to know that, like, they don't, we don't have any ideas yet, but... We don't have any money to fly in. No, <laughs> no, we know. Yeah. Get here on your own. But they're trying to get as many blacks as possible, black <laughs> comics. <laughs> but name black comics. Yeah. But uh, I couldn't do it because I went to Maui with my kids. It's too bad because all those people became big stars from doing that. <laughs> do you have any phobias? I used to be really afraid of heights and... So I would scare you right now? Well, not you. I don't consider you. I'm not tall enough? Tall, no. I had a roller coaster experience that made me afraid of heights. What happened? I got on this like roller coaster at the state fair when I was a kid and I was too young to be on it. I didn't listen to the... I'm not listening time. again, man. You never listen. And I didn't know what ride it was. I just got in line and was like, yeah, I want to go on it. And then it was a road, it was called the Wild Miles. She still remember the name of it. <laughs> it's like that every day you think about that. <laughs> I don't like mouse. the word wild or mouse. <laughs> I'm afraid of mice because of that. <laughs> Show me your frightened face. Timmy, you grew up in Michigan, right? Yeah, Detroit, Michigan. Were you a big fan of Motown growing up? I know I was. I was, yeah. But I mean, I love Motown. Yeah. The Supremes, Jackson 5, Marvin Gaye. Man. I used to, the Jackson 5 was everything when I was little. I was the same age group as those guys. We used to want to dress like the Jackson 5. And then one day my mother explained to us that the Jackson 5, they don't dress like that when they're just normal kids around the house. <laughs> She's like, they don't wear orange bell bottoms when they're just being normal kids. And platform shoes. Yeah. yeah. We were like, oh, okay. And then she even showed us eventually, like, here's pictures of them just yeah. being normal. Motown was the way that I, it was my first introduction to, like, poetry. And, like, seeing how rhymes are written and stuff, like... You know the way you are, you know you look like a dunna. Oh, you should have been anything that you wanted to, but, but I, I could tell. The, the way you do the things, things you do, did it, did it. Did it. You got a smile so bright, you know you could have been a candle. I'm holding you so tight, you know you could have been a handle. Of <laughs> of course you were in a Motown. You did uh, Ike Turner and we can update. Yeah. I, I love you, Kevin Nealon. Uh, Thank you, Ike. I got to tell you, though, man, it was the the one time that we did it. You may not remember, but Mandel. Remember Dave Mandel? Yeah. He wrote that those bits, and he wanted me to dump a cake on you. Do you remember that? I don't remember that. He wanted me to... It did was you like, do it? He, he, well, it was a big thing. He wanted me to dump a cake on you, and he wanted me to dump it on your head. Right. And I said... I don't think he'd want me to dump it on his head. I don't. I wouldn't want somebody dumping the cake on my head. <laughs> and so, Mandel, so me and Mandel sort of got had a little bit of a discussion about it, man. Yeah. But I kept. I even asked you. I remember at the time. I go, Kevin, what do you want me to do? And you, you, you kept going like, uh, just go for it, man. Just go for yeah, it. Yeah, that would have been funny, man. He was right. Dave was right. <laughs> You're so scared. You don't like to take risks, do you? Hello. Hello. How are you? Fine. Thank you. Good. So Kevin, tell me a little bit about this area. It's called California, uh -huh. and it was annexed from Mexico. Uh -huh. I read that you threw in the first pitch at the Chicago Cubs game in Wrigley Field. Yes. How was that? Was uh, it so nervous? Because I did it once when they were playing the White Sox. I've never been so nervous. It, it, Wrigley Field, you did it? Yeah. Yeah. It was. I was really nervous. It was fun. So um, did you practice before you went to the mound? I just a little, just a little bit, you know. Yeah. But the thing that was funny was the. Uh, guy who was catching, I don't even know his name, but he was a catcher. He was a catcher. And he didn't have any pads. He just had on his uniform. Yeah. And I said, uh, I can throw pretty hard. Are you going to wear a pad? And he goes, he looks at me, he goes, no. <laughs> I won't even use a glove. <laughs> uh, and then I threw it. I got it over the plate. Nice. Had a nice fastball. Even got on the ESPN. Wow, good for you, man. Yeah. You watch any of those master classes? I watch Steve Martin, some of his class. I think he's so brilliant. Yeah, he was, just, I was a big fan of his. And even like the, even just watching his class, 
like I learned something. Mm -hmm. And his book was great too. His book was, it was my guide to doing stand up. I read his book and I watched Seinfeld. Uh, Watch any of my stuff? Uh, I did, because I was trying to figure out what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> did you have a piece of furniture growing up that you remember? Piece? I actually have a cup that I always drank out of, that I still have. Yeah. That my mother bought me when I was a kid. You still have it? I still have it. And I Is still... it a sippy cup? It's, not... <laughs> and it's a coffee cup. A coffee cup. I love mash. Yeah. When I was a kid in Allen Alda, and I wanted to be a doctor when I was like eight or nine. My mother was proud of that idea and yeah. bought me a cup that said doctor on it. And um, it's a coffee cup, but I was a kid. I didn't drink coffee. Yeah. So, you know, I would still drink milk and Kool Aid out of it or whatever. Yeah. And Stuff then, less healthier than coffee. Yeah. And, but I never became a doctor, but I saved the cup. And then just recently, my alma mater. Uh, said they would like to give me an honorary doctorate's degree. No kidding. Yeah. That's great. And so I was telling my sister, and she goes, Do you have your, do you still have a doctor cup that mom gave you? <laughs> and I almost, uh, I got choked up just thinking about it, you know? Yeah, and yeah. It was like, I told her I'd do. Is your yeah. mom still alive? No, she passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. It's I met your mom on Mother's Day special. Yeah, yeah. She's a nice lady. Sorry to hear that. And your mom? She's 90, uh, wow. almost 92. Wow. Yeah. I remember the Mother's Day show. What, didn't she, like, Trump had a crush on her? <laughs> yeah, or something? Trump. Trump was on that show. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't she have a crush on him? Or wasn't that? Like no, a... she didn't. He had, I guess, a crush on her. On her, okay. And then they've been, they dated for like 10 years after that. <laughs> <laughs> Although they were both married. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you remind you do we talk to your mother about that all the time every morning <laughs> morning mom how's trump <laughs> that was fun man. that was so much fun how long do you think you and i could survive in your house without going out to get food just what's in the refrigerator <laughs> maybe <laughs> Before we start eating each other, probably yeah. like, oh, maybe three or four days. Do we have to finish the food before we start eating each other? <laughs> yes, we do. Okay. We can't eat each other and then just go, oh yeah, I got some uh, crackers left over. What was the last thing that was stolen from you? Uh, money from a checking account. How do your checking account? Yeah. How do they do that? The computer. I got like hacked. Somebody hacked and got into your bank account? Yeah. What like, was your PIN number? Uh, great, really nice. Somebody stole like $17,000. No way! Yeah. Did you get it back? Yeah, got it all back. Who was it? Uh, it was me. I did it myself. <laughs> you wanted attention. <laughs> do you guys know Timmy Meadow? Yes, I do. Hi. Hi. Dennis, nice hey, to nice meet to you. Meet. <laughs> My daughter, Tasha. Hey, Tasha. Hey, nice to meet you. <laughs> a lot of good things about you guys. Oh, thank How you. How funny is this guy right here? That you is know, amazing. Don't, don't even put it. I, uh, no, seriously. So I, I said, I know him. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. And then I think I heard you say the name. Yeah, and he's been out of work forever, so I, I'm surprised you still remember him. <laughs> Timmy, that's going to be the highlight of the hike right there. You should, uh, yeah. It, so for me, it has been. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for fun, Tim? I'm good at being a lover. <laughs> <laughs> Show me your face when you're heartbroken. You leave the lights on in the uh, bathroom when you when you go in there, or do you turn them off? Uh, turn them. Um, I turn them on. You don't mind looking at yourself? No, I don't. I also want to make sure, like, in just in case anything comes out, that I should be aware of. Yeah. Do you like those automatic flush toilets? Uh, I'm not too crazy about them. Actually. I don't like it because I like it doesn't the... give you a chance to inspect your work. Well, yeah. How do you know you don't have tapeworm or blood in your stool? I just don't like being told when I'm done by a machine. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I'll tell you when I'm done. But you can be funny sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Are you a sore loser? I am not. Not on outwardly. I'll be very... Uh, you hate keep it inside? I keep it inside. And then I go home and I scream That's at myself. In the mirror? For being a loser. Yeah. Like that scene uh, in once, once Upon a Time, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah. Like, with uh, DiCaprio goes in and he goes, I'll fucking blow your head off if you fuck that line up again. I, I go, that's me. That's me. <laughs> they took that from me. It's so funny. You beat yourself up a lot? Uh, not as much as I used to. Look at me. Do you beat yourself up a lot? <laughs> not, as much, not as much as I used to. Not as much as you used to? Yeah. You see you coming now. 
I do. I, I'm gonna look out for myself. When do you think it was that you looked your best? Uh, <laughs> don't say right now. What makes you happy, Tim? I've been trying to make you happy the whole hike. Um, Nothing. You know what I'm really makes me happy? You know what I'm really happy is a uh, corned beef sandwich from uh, Cantor's Deli. Are you a corned beef guy? I love corned beef, I didn't man. know that about you. I love corned beef. I had no idea. Oh, good. We're, I see cars. Yeah. Yeah. Civilization. Over. Here's people, humans. But seriously, how much did a Spade and you guys like to tease Farley? He's the best, man. Because he loved it. I was have been thinking, like, I, it will come to me like bits that we used to do to make each other laugh. Yeah. Now, I remember one we used to do, and you would only do it when somebody was talking to you in a seri about a serious conversation. And, yeah. uh, and so I'd be talking to him, and I'd say, like, yeah, my mother, uh, you know, she's been complaining about, you know, not having enough money and asking me if I could send money. So I'm like, yeah, I'll send her a check. And, and then Farley would just wait and he would go, I don't care. <laughs> it would make me laugh so <laughs> fucking hard. And he would wait and I would do it to him too. But you have to wait for the right serious story where it's not, it's not medical or nobody's yeah. life is in danger. Yeah, yeah. But it's something that you... You know, you really want to get off your chest or something? Yeah. And he would hit me with that, man. It would make me laugh so hard. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. You ever ice skate? Uh, yeah, when I was younger, I used to. I grew up in Detroit. Um, we had a big yard, and uh, we had a frozen, like, water lit on it. Yeah, but it freeze over, and then uh, my Tim. mother bought us some skates. Tim. And we went out. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. True or false? I played amateur cricket for two years. False. That's right. Yeah. Are you a hypochondriac? No. Even though I always think I got cancer. <laughs> Yeah, I just think it's there. Like it's just they haven't discovered it yet. Yeah. No matter what, how many, how well the physical is. Yeah. I'm just like they're like, no, you're fine. I'm like, no, I got cancer. I'm not leaving until you find the cancer. <laughs> I know I got it. You just got to work harder. <laughs> Thank you, Tim Meadows. Man, the times we had together, including this hike. Do I care? No, no. Thanks for joining. Please subscribe. Turn on notifications. We'll catch you next time. Happy trails. I love you, Kevin Nealon.